Hello, my name is Simon Elishaw. In this presentation, I'll outline the work I undertook for my MSc individual project at Imperial College London. Over the past few months, in collaboration with my supervisors, Luca Schmidt and Dr. Bernard Kine, from Imperial College's Biomed IA lab, I've developed a deep learning model capable of estimating the 3D pose of an infant from RGB video. This model achieves state-of-the-art results on the benchmark mini RGBD dataset whilst removing the requirement for an input depth channel. The video shown here is a visualization of the outputs when this project model is applied to the benchmark dataset. This presentation will outline the background, methodology, results, and future work resulting from this project. Firstly, the background. Infant pose estimation has a number of practical applications. The primary motivator for this project, though, is its role in the development of an automated general movement assessment. Currently, there are a number of disorders, such as cerebral palsy, which can be diagnosed via the analysis of an infant's movement quality. This is done by the qualitative assessment of a video of an infant by a highly trained clinician. This has inherent human variability and is also resource intensive though. Therefore, the widespread use of such an assessment is limited. The automation of this pro process could allow assessment in a, ride, a wide range of settings and a larger screening program to be carried out. This could result in the average age of diagnosis for a range of disorders to be lowered hence allowing for earlier interventions and improved clinical outcomes. The automation of this process requires the development of two models, namely an infant pose estimation model, the focus of this project, and a diagnostic classifier, which is yet to be developed. The current state-of-the-art approaches in infant pose estimation are based either on classical methods, such as random ferns, or are empirically adapted deep learning models only trained on adult data sets. This is in contrast to the adult domain, in which deep learning convolutional neural networks have represented the state of the art since the introduction of deep pose by Toshelf et al. in 2014. One reason for this difference is that the adult domain contains large data sets, such as human 3.6M and MPII. However, in the infant domain, the availability of such data is limited. Therefore, training data Training data-hungry deep learning CNNs on such small datasets was pre previously thought to be infeasible. However, this project has used transfer learning to overcome the data sh shortage. The basic principle is to pre-train a model on a related task with a large dataset before fine-tuning the same model on the smaller target dataset. Theoretically, CNN features which are common between the two tasks do not have to be relearned for the target dataset, hence boosting performance. In this project, the large adult datasets were used to pre-train the model on pose estimation tasks before fine-tuning on the infant dataset. Next, the methodology used. Three distinct deep learning models have been trained for this project, consisting of a faster RCNN bounding box model, a 2D pose estimation model based on the work of Zhao et al, and a 3D lifting network adapted from Martinez et al. paper. These form the pipeline shown in the diagram. The input RGB image is firstly cropped according to the output bounding box. The joint locations on the cropped image are then estimated by the 2D pose estimation model. These 2D coordinates are then given to the 3D lifting network to estimate the final 3D pose. The first step, as previously outlined, was the cropping of the input image according to the bounding box of the infant. This ensures that the inputs to the 2D pose estimation model has a subject of consistent scale and also removes extraneous background noise. The model was based on the popular FASTER RCNN model architecture and pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset before fine-tuning for the infant task on the synthetic infant mini RGBD dataset. The next step in the pipeline is the 2D pose estimation. The task of estimating the pixel coordinates of a number of key points, such as elbows and knees, from an input image. In the adult domain, it has been found that models that estimate prob the probability of a key point present at all pixel locations to form a heat map outperform those that directly regress key point locations. 
To form the ground truth for such models, a heat map for each key point is produced by placing a symmetrical 2D Gaussian at a key point's coordinate location. Inference of the final joint location is found as the coordinate with the maximum value on the predicted heat map. The work of Zhao et al. provided a simple baseline for this heat map approach and formed the basis of this project's 2D model. It is formed of a ResNet 50 backbone to which four deconvolutional layers are added, which upsample the low level features of the ResNet backbone to produce an output of K by 64 by 64 heat maps, where K is the number of key points. The model was pre trained on the MPII adult dataset before fine tuning on the synthetic mini RGBD dataset. The final model in the pipeline is a 3D lifting network. This takes an input of 2D pixel locations and outputs the 3D locations of each key point relative to the pelvis joint. The lifting network is adapted from the work of Martinez et al. Due to the low dimensionality of the input, simple ROLU units can be used. These are combined with common deep learning techniques such as residual units, batch normalization, and dropout to form a simple but effective deep learning architecture. This model was firstly pre-trained on the MPEI INF 3D HP date adult dataset before fine tuning on the infant mini RGBD dataset. During the development of proposed estimation models, the transfer learning step was failing. The reasons for this were subtle. In the 2D case, the adult MPII dataset had fewer key points than the mini RGBD infant dataset. Therefore, learning these missing key points dominated the fine tuning process and, due to the lack of infant data, had limited success. For the 3D lifting network, the degradation was found to be much greater. This is because the order that the key points are inputted to the model determines the mapping the network learns. This order changed between the adult and the infant datasets. And so the functional relationship between the inputs had to be completely relearned, resulting in little to no benefit from pre-training. The solution developed by this project is to map all the key point frameworks to one common definition. This is taken to be the dataset with the fewest key points, in this case the MPII dataset. For example, the left ankle key point is at position 8 in the mini RGBD dataset, but at position 0 in the MPII dataset. Therefore, for the mini for the mini RGB dataset, position 8 is mapped to position 0. The figure on the right shows a visualization of this mapping process for the infant and adult 3D datasets to the, this MPII definition. Now the model architecture has been laid out, I will present quantitative metrics and visualizations for performance of the 2D and 3D pose estimation models developed for this project. Firstly, the 2D model. The images on the left show visualizations of a success case and a failure case. B is a challenging input due to the self-occlusion caused by the crossing of two limbs. Furthermore, the synthetic nature of the data coupled with the lack of clothing means the distinction between crossing limbs is made even more challenging. The table on the right shows the comparative performance of this project's, of this project's model to the current state of the art, the empirically adapted OpenPose model on the benchmark mini RGBD dataset. The PCKH metric is analogous to accuracy at the differing thresholds, and AGPE stands for average joint position error, which is the average Euclidean distance between the ground truth and the estimated key point coordinates. For all three metrics, this project's model outperforms the state of the art. Further comparison can be made on a key point by key point basis between our model and the state of the art. This shows the high accuracy of this project's estimations on all, nearly all key points, especially the lower limb ones. This is thought to be a result of this project's specialised training on the infant data. Pleasingly, the 3D pose estimation model also showed state-of-the-art performance on the mini RGBD infant dataset. The video on the left shows a visualisation of the outputs from the model on the test set of this data. It is of particular note this project's model does not require an additional depth channel input, unlike the current state-of-the-art model. This video demonstrates the generally accurate poses predicted by the model. The 3D lifting model has a clear dependency on the 2D pose estimation model's performance. However, evidence has been seen that the lifting network can reform plausible poses from incorrect 2D inputs. 
The video does not show does show the output has a jittery nature though. As no temporal information is used in the calculation, this is not unreasonable and could be an area for future refinement. Although the model has only been fine-tuned on a synthetic imaging data set, experimentation into the ability of the model to generalize the real data has been undertaken. The Mahavia project at Imperial College has collected a real imaging data set. However, the ground, 3D ground truths are corrupted and the 2D ground truths are missing the center of spine creeping. Therefore, fine tuning on this data set is not currently possible. Inference can still be conducted though and is visualized in the video currently being shown. The model generalizes surprisingly well to this challenging data set. The average joint position error for the 2D keeping for which the ground truths exist was found to be 13.82 pixels. However, scenarios where the camera angle varies or the imprint is occluded by a doctor's hand or medical equipment are not seen in the synthetic data set, and so the model fails to generalize to these inputs. Looking forward to areas for future research, refinements to the model can be made to boost performance, such as the addition of temporal information. However, the largest outstanding research challenge is the generalization of the model to real data. The previous slide showed evidence of the model's current ability in this domain. However, performance gains can undoubtedly be made through the fine tuning of the model on real data. One option is to redefine the common key point framework from the MPII dataset to the real Mahavia dataset. This would allow the fine tuning of the 2D model, however, the cost of this would be losing four key points describing the infant post. Fine tuning the 3D model is tricky due to lack of 3D ground truths. Unsupervised approaches such as Chen et al. do exist though. Furthermore, if 3D ground truths did become available, the current state of the art supervised adult 3D pose estimation, Margie pose, could be of interest. Therefore, depending on the future availability of 3D ground truths, either of these models could be adapted to the infant domain to increase the performance of this model on the real data set. To conclude, I presented the first deep learning model to be developed for 3D infant pose estimation. This has been achieved by using transfer learning to adapt baseline models to pose in the adult domain. The model has outperformed the current state of the art 2D and 3D models on the benchmark mini RGBD synthetic infant dataset. Furthermore, the 3D model presented here does not require a depth channel unlike the current state of the art random ferns model. This removal of the depth channel has implications for a variety of computer vision applications, especially the development of an automated general movement assessment described at the start of this presentation. Previously, such an assessment required the setup of specialized RGBD cameras. However, due to the work of this project, such a tool has the potential to be run on a device that is ubiquitous as a smartphone. Thank you for listening.